È arrivato il momento di introdurre Liv Stromkist, la fumettista svedese, attivista femminista, DJ e giornalista. Ha iniziato con delle fanzine femministe disegnate, vere e proprie chicche, piene di documentatissime informazioni, che sono poi diventati dei fumetti pluripremiati. Se possiamo leggerli oggi in Italia è grazie alla casa editrice Fandango e in particolare a Tiziana Triana. E da Tuba siamo delle sue grandissime fan e ci è piaciuto moltissimo anche il suo ultimo fumetto uscito quest'anno, La rosa più rossa si schiude. Diamo quindi il benvenuto a Liv Stromkist e a Barbara Ledacheni che ha avuto la fortuna di poterla intervistare. Barbara, oltre ad essere una socia di Tuba, è anche la curatrice di Inquiete Festival di Scrittrici e la caporedatrice del sito ingenere.it. Buona presentazione. Hello Liv, welcome Hello. to Van de Femme, our comics festival organized by Tuba, the feminist bookshop of Rome. Um, I would like to start from feminism. Um, I, I know you're an activist or you define yourself an activist or at least uh, in, Italy, in Italy you are present <laughs> as an, a feminist activist. And I would like to know um, your activism story and Which are the artists that influenced you in uh, your becoming your becoming a feminist artist? Um, I think that um, I have almost uh, one date when I became a feminist. It was like one day from <laughs> when I was 17. It was from just from one day to another. Before, I didn't know anything about feminism. I was just 17 years old. I grew up in the countryside in Sweden. And I think that uh, in this time, uh, everyone was like, feminism was not very um, popular. It was something that was considered, uh, maybe it was a thing in the 70s, but now everything is done and there is nothing else to, to talk about, more or less. So, but I think that, uh, so I went uh, by accident, I went to... Um, to a workshop with my sister because uh, I was visiting her in Stockholm and they had like a feminist bookshop like yours, uh, probably. <laughs> um, and we were interested in punk music and alternative culture and so on. So we went to this bookshop just because of that. Uh, but then there was this uh, woman who is a sociologist uh, who, uh, who had made like a Um, a, a big work about uh, inequalities in young um, heterosexual couples and just interviewed them and studied the dynamics between very young couples uh, that didn't have any kids and didn't live together. But still you could see that uh, we, when you interviewed them, they had very um, deep inequalities uh, in between them. So. Um, where the guy was often deciding like um, the the rules uh, for the relationship and uh, what was considered normal behavior and everything. So it was something that affected me very, very deeply. And both me and my sister, we went home from this workshop. We were just like completely um, turned upside down. Like now we, uh, we got this huge revelation. <laughs> Um, we started to see uh, the world uh, through feminist glasses and then we would just like look at everything and just like why is this like this why is this like this you know so we were um, con continuously talking and uh, discussing every uh, aspect of our lives uh, for years you know <laughs> just uh, <laughs> having this uh, big change in, in, in thinking and I went home to my little um, town and I 
um, borrowed from the library, uh, the, the only feminist books uh, that was in that library. It was about two or three books. Uh, and uh, I just read uh, those books and then I was uh, all set, 100% uh, feminist. And um, uh, yeah, so that was like my uh, becoming a feminist story. Well, I know I, I, I would like to use the word revelation also to speak about your books. Because, um, I mean, you are doing nonfiction through comics. Uh, you take something that, you know, it's almost like self-evident, like love or genitals. And then you build a feminist standpoint to understand how society determines the way we live or we perceive things. Um, but you're not giving up complexity. And this is what I think it's, you know, the sort of magic of your books, not giving up complexity, but still being very accessible. And the, the final effect is like, uh, revelation you know in Italy we would say discovering hot water it's something that was always in front of you and you simply weren't looking at it in a critical way but that really moves and changes your perception um, I think um, that sometimes uh, feminism uh, is not really willing to uh, open up new conversations. Uh, and then there are a lot of uh, theorists or activists that think that feminism is good when it's difficult. I had this conversation, uh, it was about um, a manifesto that was becoming very popular and selling tons of books. And they said, I really don't get the success of this manifesto and I went like, Oh, I, I think it, it sells because it's easy, it's understandable. You know, you can give it away to your grandmother, your niece, your daughter, and be sure they will understand it. They don't need a PhD to understand it. And, and the answer I got back was, should feminism be easy? And I really don't have a question, an answer for that question, if feminists should be easy or not. But as um, having been in a bookshop, I know that books are used as messages, books are used to open up new conversations. So I really think it's great when we have a book that it's complex and at the same time accessible, building a feminist standpoint. Do you have a, um, an ideal reader in your mind when you write your, your books? You have your like self 17 years old teenage <laughs> you're talking to, or I don't know, who's your ideal reader when you write and draw your books? Uh, well, I don't have, uh, I don't have anyone in mind, uh, when I write my books except myself like i try to uh always just uh um write something that i feel like i am very very interested in so the the feeling that i'm looking for is the feeling where i feel like wow i'm so interested in this theory like what is this so it has to be something that that really 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 interests me if it doesn't really interest me, it's not in the book. So, uh, you know, because there's a lot of information about, for example, like the, 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 the genitals. I mean, you could, you could write like thousands of, of pages of this, like, but I, I pick out the, the things that really make me like jump, you know, like what I had no idea about this or so it, it, it's, uh, I, I don't, I don't, um, I think like when I started to make books, I, um, I, I started out making a fanzine, a very small little uh, paper. And I lived in an apartment with my friend and I just wanted to make something, you know, to make her laugh because this was a very small, we just made for like 10 or 15 copies of this small magazine. So I think 
like that very intimate setting like i just want something that is interesting to my best friend uh, i think it's a, it, for me it was a very good way to think because when you start thinking about like what will everyone think of this or who will get annoyed by this or who will um who will start to hate me because I write this or um, th this kind of um, those thoughts for me are very blocking for creativity. It makes me scared and uncomfortable and so on. So for me, it was good to just only have this little bubble where I imagine this like very loving, accepting um, community with me and my friend and just like what makes us laugh. Um, so that was the starting point. I think that also like when I started to make comics, I didn't have in mind ever that this would get published anywhere. Mm -hmm. I was just making them in this small alternative movement. So for me, it was not, uh, I think also that was good for me because I didn't think like, um, what is going to sell or like who, how can I make this comic so someone will publish it? Uh, I was only focused on being like, um, th that made me, I think, uh, have no compromise in my comic. Like I don't try to make my comics more nice. So a more broad uh, <laughs> public will like them. So I just write whatever, I want in my comics and then hopefully that's you know, like like what I what I noticed was that a lot of people liked uh, the content of the comics because I think that uh, people are deeply very much the same you know like we are very uh, all of us are interested in uh, only you know one or two topics we are interested in love <laughs> we're interested in you know um we have the same feelings about our body like we um so it's it's um i think it's uh it's something that uh, like if you write something that really means something to you i think uh it will you know it will also affect other people because it's we are very um much the same i think wait i i noticed that um you don't care about being likable, uh, which is something I think it's uh, a great freedom, and 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 it's, I mean, uh, an authentic expression. Um, and I think as a feminist, a lot of times, uh, what you learn is that as a woman, is that you don't need to be likable. You. I mean, who cares if not everybody likes you uh, and then you base your relationships on affinity, on on other things. And um, sometimes reading your books, it's um, you're not reassuring, uh, you're not likable, you're not reassuring. And sometimes the, the fact is like, okay, somebody needs to tell you this and I'm going to be the one that it's going to tell you this, even if it's not so nice. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and I'm not only telling you, I'm also uh, making you see it through the drawings. Um, you use a lot of different um, kinds of, you use black and white colors, uh, paper cuts, um, photographs integrated into your books. Um, how do you deal or how do you use this uh, complexity and these different styles? Um, well, I don't know. I think that I just uh, work a lot with uh, intuition when I when I uh, when I work and a lot with uh, spontaneity. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, in Italian we understand it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and also I don't have a lot of time to draw. I think this is also like a, a feminist issue when it comes to female cartoonists. No, I'm just kidding. But it's like, I have three kids. 
and oh, wow. them, <laughs> and like I have one and it's like, it's, you know, like I think when I like I have one comic book I don't think it's out in Italian but it's out in um, Sweden it came out when I had two kids who one was two years old and the other was four years old and um, that book is com almost only um, text and uh, cut out <laughs> photographs <laughs> because like at that time I didn't have any time to like make a very very um, detailed drawing uh, I just um, but I think like in time it will change and maybe I will when I grow older and my kids <laughs> are uh, big I will make very very um, detailed uh, <laughs> <laughs> people who are complaining that my drawings are too simple they have to like um i think take this into effect that i don't have all the time in the world no but it's i'm just kidding but i it, it's also like making this uh very uh spontaneous uh, fast drawing often i don't even make a sketch Sometimes I make sketches, but a lot of the times I just draw with ink, like the first um, thing that comes into mind. It, the feeling is very often like, this is good enough, you know, this is good enough, this is good enough. Like, I don't think like, sometimes I think like, okay, this drawing is not perfect, but I, I don't care. Like it has, it, it's good enough. So I, I continue. So it's, uh, I think also that's like, uh, kind of a, an approach to creativity that I had to apply because when I started to, um, when uh, before I started, before I made comics, I was really into writing and I wanted to be an author. So I was writing a lot of poems and um, short stories and so on, but I was uh, very, very perfectionist. And I was like um, having a lot of difficulties to um, create because I always felt, felt like this is not good. This is um, not good enough. Um, I didn't know what to write about. Like I felt very like it has to be so good that this is blocking me this thought. Like the first uh, thing I write has to be perfect from the beginning, you know? So it was very, I, I, I remember I wanted to make 10 or 15 poems ready so I could send them to a publisher but I, I never even got 10 poems you know because I was always like throwing them out like this is not good this is not good this is not good then when I started to make comics it was a very a very big relief for me because I didn't know anything about comics I didn't know any comic artist so I could just like in the peace of my home, you know, make comics. I didn't know that there are one zillion rules about comics as well, of course, you know, and, but <laughs> I didn't know th those rules, fortunately. So I could just, um, uh, you know, let the, uh, the, what I wanted to tell is the most important thing, you know, like the, the, the point is to communicate something and, um, so I wanted to tell something and this is how I communicate it. I just, and when I started to make comics, because I had this um, experience of being over perfectionist, I, I said to myself when I started to make comics, like I, I, I shall not start and change everything all the time with my comics. I should, I just have to accept my comics for, for what they are, you know? I, so when I made one page ready, I just put it in another pile. I made one other um, page, I put it in the pile and that's how I made my whole first book, you know, just like having this like decide for yourself that this, uh, this, uh, this is good enough, you know? So. I think that was like the the clue for for me to be able to create. So you create like thinking in a to a, a lovely um, environment, like your best friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to create you your own um, to... illusion that the world is very <laughs> loving. You, know? <laughs> you were able to get rid of. Um, the need of being likable and the perfectionism that affects a lot of us when we have to become like public or having a public voice. And, and you often dialogue with a big feminist sister that um, 
it's inside each one of us. I noticed that a lot of uh, your footnotes, which I think are super funny, um, are like, oh, I know you're going to say this, but you know, oh, I, I take this into account, but I'm saying another thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I found it very funny, your uh, way of getting rid of the big feminist sister. Um, and, and I think this use of irony and sarcasm is one of the things that are, uh, that make you very likable, actually. <laughs> um, was was it always there or is it a strategy or is is that you um i think that it's uh um i think that it's uh it's uh in 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 a way i think that humor or satire is uh, some kind of a defense <laughs> mechanism like when when something is uh, a bit too heavy to uh, to really think about it's some I, it's 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 both because it's also like i really love humor i really love um funny things and i have a lot of respect for people who are truly funny like i i really admire i think it's a great skill like something that is uh one of the things I admire most is a person who is truly funny, you know. So for me, it's a very high goal. I think it's, um, uh, I get very happy when I hear that people are laughing at my comics because that's really important to me. I want them to be really funny. And uh, unfortunately, maybe they have become a little bit more boring. I don't know, but I tr I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> But it's like, I think, like, it's important to enjoy life um, and um, to laugh about things and just have a good time. You know, it's very, it's very important. When I was a young feminist, I remember that I went to, uh, like, feminist uh, festivals and it was all about, you know, rape, um, uh, violence against women um uh it's it's all this really horrible uh very it's very um it's it's very it was very serious it's very horrible it's very dark it's very like everyone you know and and all of these things are truly horrible i just um or or eating disorders and things like this and um and i I felt the need to, you know, like, uh, find a way to also uh, have joy when you go into these things. Like, you can um, discuss subjects like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, having issues with your body, for example, but not necessarily only you know like feel completely depressed i wanted to kind of uh look at the mechanisms that are causing <laughs> these feelings and then make fun of these people like make fun of patriarchy like make fun of these um idiots like uh who who um who thought that you know the clitoris uh, is uh, the, the, you know, like the inventor of cornflakes who also um, tried to uh, make people get rid of their clitoris? I think this is like in a way just I just want to like make fun of these people and laugh because it's so bizarre and um, you know it's a way to uh, maybe um, free yourself a little bit from this uh, heavy heavy burden of all the. Uh, problems and injustices and all the pain like in the world so yeah it's true that um uh you know i think that feminism really works for me when um it makes me feel powerful and yeah. when it yeah opens another kind of imagination and not when it kills joy, which yeah. actually sometimes does, but when, you know, it's a form of fun and enjoyment yeah. and love 
and sound that that's when it works but it's true mm-hmm. that a lot of times it doesn't and that i had a question for you that was related to this because we are super used to feminism explaining us why we are op- oppressed or um why being women it's cool which is something that a lot of times you have books or talks or whatever about uh you know like saying oh the word patriarchy is telling you uh you are not cool but yes you are cool and i <laughs> think like self-empowerment um and then you wrote a book about that this is your last book in italian uh, it's called yeah. La Rosa Più Rossa si schiude. and it's about love which is something that feminists do not often speak about how was it that you decided to speak about love more than you you already said that it's because everybody thinks about love but yeah i i think that i i um i made one book about love uh in 2010 in sweden it came out it's called the the feelings of prince charles yes it's out in in italian yes yes it is yeah uh so i wrote like a very uh a quite feminist book about love. Uh, it's, it's called The Feelings of Prince Charles. It's a lot about the social construction of love and how society constructs love and inequalities between men and women in love and so on. And But for me, it's been 10 years since, since I wrote that book. And then I wanted to write another book about love that <laughs> is kind of, um, uh, you know, it's kind of a continuation or like um, uh, a way of uh, looking at um, more about just the, f- the, the feeling of falling in love and the, the event of falling in love. Um, but in, in a lot of ways, this new book is uh, contradicting uh, the, <laughs> the first book about love. Uh, because um, it's like uh, so. So I don't know. I just I I get uh, in in Sweden there is ten years apart between these books, but uh, in other countries they have come more close together. Um, yes, like yeah, more together. So I got a letter from a French uh, girl. She was like, "I just read the feelings of Prince Charles," and I'm like, "I'm never going to have a boyfriend in my life. I'm so happy. I'm liberate. <laughs> you know." And then, <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm like she 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 reads the the reddest rose unfolds, which is a very like pro romantic book, and she's like, I don't know, I have to send you an email to you know explain <laughs> what's the answer, you know, like I feel really confused about this message, like why you know like I was just like into the self empowerment thing, and now it's like what do you mean, you know, so. Um, but uh, for me, it's, uh, I don't know, I think like um, um, what I try to investigate in uh, my latest book about love is how uh, I think that society has um, developed in a direction where um, we all we are told all the time that like we are uh we have to like manage our own faith uh we have to set up goals and then reach them we have to like live our best life and uh you know just uh be like really um goal oriented individualists and um then uh i think my own experience is that when you uh think about the event of love or falling in love it's this huge part of your life that that in my experience doesn't operate um like that like doesn't operate rationally or it's not something that is um controllable uh in that way like it can be for example you really want to uh, be in love with someone uh, but you you experience that uh, I don't feel anything for this person anymore. Like the feeling is lost, and um, why you don't know it just happened. And 
I was really interested in these like very mystical parts of being a uh, human today <laughs> and uh, for example uh, or another example like um, you're really in love with someone who's not who does not love you back and like you your highest dream is to stop being in love with this person but it's impossible like you try but it's you know something that you can't uh, can't really control and for me because i'm a very like controlling person i think i think that i don't really um for me like i i always uh, admired like the rational thinking and the analysis and so on for me i think there's been a clash like when because i i um i experience in my own life that i cannot control these things like why i'm i feel like i know a lot of i know everything about this but still <laughs> my feelings are like not acting at all the way that i would like them to act you know so i was just curious uh of investigating more about the reasons for example why is love ending why is um yeah w why is love not happening and um and so on so so this book is uh is a little bit um, more about that part of life and uh yeah i also thought it was a little bit about embracing your vulnerability losing control yeah, yeah. You know, and that you know, can be part of the game. You don't always have to measure everything and, you know, be um, self-standing. You can admit that you need the other or the others yeah. in order to feel alive. And yeah. I think we are living through harsh time. I mean, you're not in Rome. <laughs> you could be, but you're not. And... Uh, we are all living through screens and admitting um, it, it's a very shift from love, but I think that admitting yeah. vulnerability and interdependence, it's, it's like super important that your self-representation on Instagram, your perfect life on Instagram, it's not going to save you. You need more than that. Um, you've been translated, you had like, huge success you've been translated to a lot of languages and um in italy you are uh, published by a feminist um uh, i don't know publishing house she's, yeah. uh, by tiziana triana uh, she's <laughs> chief editor of fandango is that um did that happen because a feminist liked your job or do you make like choices about who's going to publish your books and how do they walk into the world? Actually, um, there is, uh, I have uh, someone who works with uh, selling the book and making those contracts and uh, I haven't been very, um, uh, you know, I, I, I haven't, uh, really like had, had, uh, an opinion about what, uh, but I think it's, 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 uh, it's funny because Fandango, for example, doesn't usually, uh, publish comics. No, they don't. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it's great because just sometimes, you know, they, they put my books in the comic shelf and they are, beside the smurfs and the, <laughs> and the uh, donald duck or so you know like uh, so but it's it doesn't have to be in that shelf just because it's uh, squares it's it's better that they are in the shelf of um you know um feminist issues or um you know just uh, some uh, social uh, debate <laughs> section or something like that because uh so I think it's really nice to be published by a, a publishing company that, that is like interested in the subjects of the books. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Is there anything you would like to add or to the conversation or do you think it would be nice to let the people in Italy know? 
I would just like to send them my greetings. Like I'm re really happy that you read my books. Um, uh, and <laughs> and uh, I, I want very much to go to uh, Italy and visit the bookshop uh, when, <laughs> when, uh, when the Corona is over. And uh, yeah, so I just want to give my greetings. How do you manage with your three kids to go around presenting the books, the festivals? <laughs> do you carry all of them with you or no uh, at <laughs> party at the festival? <laughs> it's actually been been very good for uh, for uh, for me because uh, the corona has uh, saved me very much because it was actually I had like I had a lot of invitations to go to different places, but I can't really, I can't say yes to so much, but I decided that like I can go to two or three places a year, but, uh, um, but then Corona came, so I couldn't go anywhere. So, uh, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's fine. Uh, so, um, but it's no problem. I mean, they, they, um, they can be with uh, the fathers and so on. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah I, <laughs> I, mean, I usually when I travel for work, I take the chance like for going out the late, dream, talk and talk and talk. I feel yeah. like people that it's like working with me, they feel like who's this lady? And come on, it's late. I want to go to sleep, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Then thank you, Liv. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not there anymore. Thank you. Okay. I really hope to meet you in person someday. Yeah. You too. Good luck. Good thank luck. you for the interview. Bye. Bye.